is June 3rd. Good evening, Clearview Library District Board of Trustees regular meeting, June 30, 2022. It is now 5.31, I believe, 5.30, 5.30 p.m. And we were starting, I'm gonna call this meeting to order. If everyone would please join with me with our mission statement, please. Cultivate curiosity, enlighten the mind, strengthen the community. I just think that's always a great reminder of why we're here. Um, it's always to have a pinpoint focus. Good. Um, if uh, Director Kling, would you please do a roll call? Adams. I'm here. Brodsky. Here. Valderrama. Here. Dunworth. Here. Gerstner. Here. Basler. Here. Klein. Here. Smith. Absent. Attorney Garcia is here. here. Yep. We have staff. Beth Gallinger, who is over there, IT yeah. Tech Services. We have Aaron Mitchell, who is our Financial and Human Resources Specialist. We have Natalie Wagner, who is our Office Manager, and Chrissy Henschler, who is our Communications Specialist and online. I believe if she's not online yet, she will be joining us. Not yet? Okay. Casey Lanzinger Pierce is not here right now. And I am Director Ann Klein. Perfect. Um, review of the agenda. Does anyone have anything to add or change on the agenda? Does everybody have the updated agenda, the one that has the executive session on it? Mine does. I do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Okay. If not, I'll count on someone else. All right. Um, public input. There is no one in person. Do I still need to read this? Should check online. That, uh, I was going to read the online one at, at, um, if, since I don't. Nobody online. There's nobody online. Okay. Well, I am going to take a minute before we move on. And I want, this is our first meeting since um, we have um, received our DOLA grant. And so I'd like to take a moment to congratulate Chrissy and Director Kling for the hard work and presentation for I would like it of record that we received a $500,000 um, dollar grant and that is impressive and it speaks a lot about our staff and our director. So congratulations. Thank you, Kendra. And I'm just gonna read the piece that again because 500,000, I like to call it a half million. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for some reason, when you use that million, it really puts it in perspective. All right. Thank you for letting me indulge for a second. Um, moving right along to the director's report. All right. Well, let's start with Chrissy, and she'll give us an update on what's new at Clearview Library District. So, Chrissy, you need a microphone. Um, I just wanted to say that one of the biggest highlights, and I don't want to steal Casey's thunder for when she does join and talk, but we've had an outstanding number of participants for our summer adventure program. Uh, last I checked, which with Brad on Monday, I think we were close to 2,000 people. Um, and we had about 456, I believe, people attend our water festival. Um, I saw Kendra and her and her grandchildren there. We got some great photos and um, people just seemed to have a really excellent time. The weather was perfect and Denver Aquarium came up and they had a great stand. And so, um, yeah, all of these efforts with our summer adventure program has continued to further our ties via social media and email connections. And so far it's just been a um, a wonderful program and great collaboration among all the staff. And we've got some great events coming up and we hope to keep seeing you guys there. So thank you. Thank you, Chrissy. As far as communication, so IT tech services manager, Beth Gallinger has good news, bad news for you. So, all right, well, I'm gonna start with the bad. Um, this is, does not make me popular, but um, uh, coming here to Clearview Library District, I have discovered some security things that I consider a bit of an issue. And one was that staff never, ever, ever change their passwords, hmm. ever. And so some people's passwords were 10 years old. And that was very concerning to me. Um, so beginning on July 11th, uh, staff and including board members for their email will be required to change your passwords. <laughs> I know, I well, um, so, 
So there is that, so they, which I know does not make me the most popular person in the library, but it is really a big deal. And um, I don't know how much you guys know about this, but I was Lafayette La Public Library was one of my member libraries when they were hacked, the city was hacked. And it took them uh, about six months to fully get back online. And it's just something I never, ever, ever would like to experience. It was a city, um, we as a consortium were uninfected by the hacking, but the, the library actually had to go offline for about six months and operate with like iPads and things. So it really is a big deal. So it is something that I highly, highly recommend. Which so, is that date again, please? July 11th. July 11th, date. thank you. What, what's the standard of care for changing? How Typically often? it is 90 days. I have agreed to ease you in with 180. Okay. And then we will, we will slowly move our way to 90. So, um, and but, on that note, I know Cole Gershner and Ron Dunworth have both had fish emails from me. No, I've reported them on Google, and it's not a fish email. So somebody's picking our email addresses and our names off of our website, and then they're doing a front for it. And you can't do anything about it except you've got a mailbox yeah. out there, so you can get trapped. Just when you reply, if you question it, reply, read the reply up on top. It will give you the real email address tell Google yeah. so they can yeah. track down the original address. But that, that just shows how important it is and how important security That's is. Why. Are you, <laughs> can I ask a question? Ron actually reported it to me. Okay. Are you going to specify a complexity level of passwords? Yes. Okay. I want to want eight, like eight characters, alphanumeric, uppercase, lowercase, and a special. All of the above. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that also has not been implemented yet. So it will be now. I can't use the same one over and over. You can't use a simple word like password, things like that. All of that will, all zeros, will be enforced. All yes, good. starting July 11th. Um, now for the good news, the happy news. It's not a half million, but all of our E-rate was approved. It's about $26,000. Um, but money is money. money Congratulations! Is money. And so I was very excited. I got the the category two today, actually. So I was very very excited. You did category one yet? Category one was done a um, few weeks ago. Yes. So is that on top of twenty six? Nope, that's total. Okay. So total is about twenty six thousand. Congratulations! So, that so, is always exciting. So that was a very exciting thing. So. Getting paid extra to be at the library to do your job <laughs> is always a bonus, and any extra <laughs> funds you can bring our way, we will say thank you. Yes. Um, and this will definitely help with Ash Street because um, all of the category two was a hardware, the network hardware for Ash. Perfect. So thank you for making one that extra mile. We appreciate it. Thank you, Ron, for helping out with those. Welcome. Yes. All right. All right. Um, does anybody have any questions on the director's report or the statistics? You do see a drop from April to May, and that's because in May the kids get out of school and we take a programming break. So that's why you see fewer people attending because we had fewer, um, lots less activity once the kids are gearing down and then it picks up again in June. So it's because the parents are already tired of them. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, there are no other questions. No. All right. Uh, monthly statistics. That goes back to you. Yep. Any, does anybody? I think you just pretty much explained yeah, it, but I wanted to yeah. make sure we hit the category. Like, could you see that if you take a look at uh, programs and program attendees, it's down 15.81%. Um, and that's the number of programs is up, but the attendance is down. So just out of curiosity, how does this compare with 2019? Do we know? Um, I don't off the top of my head. If you that, just out of curiosity, that might be fun. Spark to... lines, you can kind of see um, the spark lines go from January of 2019 oh. up until, so kind of the lines kind of tell you the story. And in some cases, they're up and down and up and yeah, down. Yeah, now I see it now that I read yeah. the whole, but I, <laughs> once I read the whole column and just not look at the spark lines. Okay, thank you, Anne. Yep. I feel brilliant. Okay, moving right along. Um, personnel report, report goes to our Vice President, Rochelle Brodsky. Uh, three new customer service specialists, Stephanie, awesome name, uh, Robert Mitchell, Lisa Mitchell, and Felicia Bernard, 
and a <clears throat> IT assistant, Tyler Mooney. Um, three positions still open, adult services assistant, technical services supervisor, and soon mobile services assistant. Okay. Are any of those three that are still pending some that have been out there for a while, Anne, or are these the, newer? Uh, a small, uh, technical services supervisor. That's a hard one to fill because it's a very Maybe specialized job. I mean, you have to know. Could you libraries. email Beth? Could you just email what you're looking for in those to all of us? Because who knows what I mean? We've got several IP people. They may know of you know someone that might fit that. Maybe the hours and that kind of thing. I know we could get online, but you know you're asking a lot of these free. <laughs> no, but if you do we use a uh, employment service at all? For we jobs? do not. Most of our things, there is something in Colorado called li library job line, oh, which okay. uh, so if they're library jobs, they're geared mostly toward Colorado, but you'll also see um, from across the United States positions there. And then we do use Indeed. Uh, and we get a lot of applications that way for customer service because usually we don't care if you have library experience, we want you to have customer service experience. Um, that's where we found Aaron on Indeed. Yay, um, Aaron, good show. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we are also going to, for the next process, we're gonna be adding it to our Facebook, like saying we're hiring because I think mm -hmm. we'll hit more people that mm -hmm. way also. But well, when I send out the initial emails, mm -hmm. I send it out to staff before we post it. And you I might include us you guys. because yeah, we got IT, IT, and some yeah. IT. I mean, we've got we've got some knowledge here mm -hmm. um, that maybe if you know it's always in the wording, and maybe it was like spark a spark a something. The hardest part for technical services is very specific to libraries and the catalogers and acquisitions and those kinds of things. Um, we we finally we've got our first application that somebody has actual technical services experience. I guess the first first application um, okay. with that yesterday um, it was very exciting. Um, are these full time? Yes, this is that one is okay. the technical Supervisor. services supervisor is mobile services assistant is part time and the adult services assistant is part time. I might know some people that they're currently freelancing and enjoying, but maybe they want to settle. We'll see. Okay, thank you. I built a business just on networking, so I'm a big network type of a person, and I believe it, it, it can really help outside the box. So thank you for doing We that. almost stole boulders, but he decided not to come. But I, I was working uh, on stealing boulders, technical services supervisor. But. Darn it. Yeah. Nice try. It would have been a pretty long drive for him, so I'll give him that. True. Is, All there, right. is there flexibility on the supervisors on salary, or is it... There is a, there's a salary range that we have. We have posted salary ranges um, and we have a formula depending on your years of experience within that range. So quite honestly, since I'm at the mid range and I have 40 years of experience, no one usually goes above the mid range. <laughs> so usually it's somewhere between the beginning and the mid range, um, but we've had to negotiate more lately with people because of the cost of living um, increases that everybody's facing. How, so. how long has that position been open? That one, it's been open for a couple months. What we're also thinking about is, is po uh, posting it nationally in Library Journal. Um, and that way we may get people who wanna move to Colorado who have the experience in libraries. I sent the posting to Buffalo and Erie County because they have a huge technical services department and asked if they would share it with their employees um probably told you no way okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? is the is it the range of public record oh yeah it's what is it it's i will you, if i don't misquote this here i will I, I hope you don't feel like you're being ran. No, this no. is this is all being offered as right. help not as right, the, right. and the jobs criticism. are posted on on the website under about us and it's work with us. And that's where any current job openings are posted. So it is 45,000 to 62,998. So it's a big range. 
Okay. All right, moving right along. Thank you. And like I said, this is this is offering for help, not criticism. We just want to, you know. No, I, I very much appreciate this because I, I've been contacting everybody I know in library world, but a lot of people I know, they're just too far south and they don't want to make the commute. Yeah. Right. Drive to my house. I'll, I'll drive you there with me. There you go. <laughs> but. All right. Well, thank you for taking time to go over it. Can I ask us. one more quick question? Of course. Have you ever offered a headhunter bonus to an employee kind of as, as an incentive? You we, know, we have not. $500, because $300 for an employee who brings me my next hire. We have not because up until now, we've had no problem filling. So it's, this is the first time where it is such a specialty. <laughs> Where we're not getting people, yeah, and it's not people unusual. know people in other libraries in this region. Possibly they would make a call and do somebody. Like library call. works at my house. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just something, but it's want to something we may have to consider in the future if we're not seeing applicants. This okay. one um, I knew was going to be really tough because I worked with Lafayette as they tried to do it, as well as um, Loveland. Uh, recently, and they both went through multiple rounds of posting and interviews and people taking the job and then change, backing out at the last minute. So we knew this was going to be tough um, just after watching those two libraries recently go through this. And what did, was Loveland's salary range approximately? I don't, I don't, don't recall. Okay, just curious. Well, if you're and, willing to consider it, it's obviously the same range. I was, I was striving for Boulder, but Loveland, I, I, <laughs> I'm sure their salary range is pretty high. Um, it's a lot larger city. I mean, it is a city, yeah. <laughs> not a town. Okay, well, moving right along, um, going to our treasury report. Good evening. Well, I'll make it quick. Our cash grew through May about $144,706. Give or take a few pennies. And uh, we're in a good cash position. Uh, incoming cash is going to slow down simply because it's the nature of our business. So we will start seeing that usage grow in terms of uh, it'll be a net negative probably going forward as we start burning through the cash we got in Q1 and Q2. Uh, other than that, things look pretty fine. Erin and I have been talking about a couple of questions I had, and I know I bother her a lot and I apologize, but just sometimes the public accounting is, I don't understand it simply because in that world, one and one is not two. You have to factor another thing that goes, so keep struggling with it, but we'll keep at it. Right now, it looks good. We're getting close to doing our annual audit. It's the back around on that. Um, I've been emailing back and forth with um, a couple things. There's probably like four more items. So I'm hoping in the next week or two that it should be done. Could you ask them if we can really start to solidify an end date so we can start aligning uh, times with our partners who would be pending it? Somebody from Silver and somebody from Lindhurst and the school. You know, when we do the auto review. Oh, as far as the meeting that we do it in? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, let's push to see if we can get that on our books sooner rather than later. So we can tie them down. And right. So it, it has to be filed with the state by July 31st. Yep. So it has to be done by 31st or you have to file for an extension. We have not heard that we will need an extension. So we have to assume that it's going to be done by the 31st as of today. Um, that's Correct. the best we know. And then usually the audit um, committee report is in August. So we get together one person from the town of Windsor, groups. one from the town of Severance, which could be Frank, um, and one from the school district, and then usually someone from the Friends and Foundation, mm -hmm. and then Ron um, as treasurer, and Kendra, but if we have Kendra, Ron, and Frank, we would have to make it a public meeting. So Frank, you might want to send someone else from Severance. <laughs> I think we had Michelle and I Michelle think Michelle usually does yeah. it. Yeah. Yep. 
Okay. So we'll, yeah, so where's the IRS? we'll have to pick a date. We'll send you some <laughs> dates. It's usually, you know, about an hour long, just so people will know. Um, and the auditor just goes through his report and you have an opportunity to ask questions. He'll explain anything that doesn't make sense to you. Um, and that's pretty much it. And then you can report back to your organizations that you attended the meeting or whoever your representative is attended the meeting and answer any questions for your organization. And then it'll get posted on the library district's website. Perfect. Anyway, um, that's it. Are there any questions in regard to the um, budget um, and the documentation? Um, I have a question, I, when do we? When does the Dola grant likely come in? Um, they're working on a contract. So we'll have a contract that we have to sign. So I talked to Chris LeMay during the week and he had some questions for us and he was writing the contract. So I would guess by the next board meeting, we will have a contract and we can't sign any contracts with contractors until we have a contract with them. But that's not an issue because we're not ready to start building up in Severance. Most of what we're 80% funding or, or spending of the money the first year or something like that. They have a yeah. very rapid. Uh, they, they don't want spend you to, rate. because they've been burned in the past with like organizations. That we got, have no problem with that. They got the grant <laughs> and didn't spend the money and let it drag on for too many years. So they do want you to spend it pretty quickly. It'll take about two days to get that. It won't take long. <laughs> uh, that, the last of our problems is how fast we're going to spend it. <laughs> it just means the way it's not an option in the whole grant. You can't do it. So. Not a problem. So, all right, perfect. No questions? Um, on the make a motion that we approve the report. Motion by Trustee Brodsky. I second. Second by Trustee Bal Balderrama. Was that close? Got it. All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, aye. Any opposed? Nay. Okay. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. You took the words right out of my mouth. All right. Moving on. Friends and Foundation. We're going to go back to Rochelle Brodsky. Uh, three major issues. Number one was just uh, the Friends and Foundation getting ready to staff the garage sale. I haven't heard any reports of how that went or how much money came Garage in. Garage sale was, we would say it was a success to get rid of the stuff that was gently used or maybe not so gently used. They made over a thousand dollars in the two days. So it did clear out a lot of things. And then um, our staff boxed up the stuff that was left and took it to Goodwill. So Thank them for that. There's a few things left. You can have that lovely love seat that's over there against <laughs> the you know, wall and those two chairs that are out in the hallway. Um, you're welcome to take those and reupholster them if you're so inclined. You just need to make a free will donation to the Friends and Foundation. <laughs> you need to get to the kids going to college. <laughs> they want their chair back. We actually had, there were three of those and someone came the other day. We did advertise them on Craigslist. And they came and they took two of them and they're putting them in their cabin uh, that is uh, near Estes Park. So they sat on them, they tested them out. It's all good. They still paid for them. <laughs> uh, the next issue is money and how to not lose money by leaving it in CDs that are making no money. And so um, things that are being explored are still like an investment type of thing through something similar to Edward Jones versus um, something similar to what the Vince Murphy Foundation does, which is setting up a trust that you know, kind of locks that money in perpetuity to then just you know, year after year, little by little, you siphon off a little to fund programs. So um, the Friends of Foundation is still kind of weighing those options of how to better grow the money. Um, then the third issue, of course, is Clearview Reads and who is going to come read to us. <laughs> I don't know if we're supposed to give out names or anything, but I will say it's a very well-known name and someone who seems very interested in doing it and something a little more out of the box. And so it could be a really fun spring if this um, well-known Colorado person is willing to come talk. Cool. So news soon, I hope. It's always fun. 
they do a great job with that. And I hope they know our, how much we appreciate all the work they put into that because that is um, just amazing. I know it was really hard to have such a <clears throat> wonderful VIN on 2019 and then just like everyone else, get the wind sucked out of you on 2020. And then it almost seems like you have to completely start building those blocks again, so. And, and I think they realize it's a learning process and that the glitch from last year was uh, audio visual kind of thing. And if this person comes through, that's going to be a big part of next year's. So, you know, you learn from one year to the next. Well, that's where you have a dress rehearsal <laughs> and make sure. So, and you get right, it's learning. And we've all um, had those, oh, heavens, what happened <laughs> moments. So, um, no one held that against them at this yep. table. It's just what happened. So, all right. We have report from liaisons, and we only have two with us. Um, take note that Aaron Smith with the Board of Education is not here today. Did anyone hear from him? No, okay, so we don't know why. All right, well, our Board of Education person is not here tonight. Um, so we're just gonna let you breathe for a second. We're gonna pick on Frank. <laughs> I'm not gonna pick on the new girl. I like her. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> That, that means she doesn't like Frank. Exactly. No, <laughs> no, that's not true. He's just been around for a few years. Okay. All right. Sure. 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 Uh, so, so the town is still working on its water issues. Um, we are close now to legislation on how new development can take place. Again, this is all residential, not commercial. Uh, we're still wanting commercial, so we're not limiting there. Um, and we're reviewing more, more legislation around water. Um, water is still an issue in town, it probably will be for a while. It's not the water itself, it's the processing of the water that's our issue. Um, so uh, that's probably the big thing. Um, I think coming up uh, July 8th is concerts in the park. Uh, we have live entertainment. Um, so. Um, was severance and winter looking at water treatment together here? Not treatment, uh, wastewater. Wastewater, okay. So we still are calling um, North Well for... For drinking water right now, we get all of our water processed through North Weld. Uh, we have a single source and a single source, which is putting out uh, issues having, uh, <laughs> uh, offering new uh, plant investments. So we can't buy new plant investments from them, which means we can't expand the facility, which means we can't get more water. So we need a second source or Northwell has to build a, a larger plant. So A or B, so. Oh, boy, and you have a town board seats available. Yeah, and, and we are getting jumped off. And we have one town board seat open still. So after Tad, uh, resigned uh, he's now president of north weld who so, resigned uh tad stout he's now um the elected president of north weld water so he's on the other side it, it was becoming stressful sitting on both sides of that negotiation so now he's only on one side of it so is there a short-term answer uh, the short-term oh, answer is we're not building anything at the well, moment. Well, that's what I'm But you know what I'm saying. There's no way to resolve the issue. It's, I guess, literally a crisis, right? Uh, I would, and I'll, you're, now you're heading into my opinion as opposed to a board opinion or town opinion. Uh, my opinion, nothing could probably happen for at least two years. And that's my personal opinion, uh, just because any large infrastructure project doesn't magically appear. Um, you just don't magically build water treatment facilities no. overnight. You don't dig new piping in overnight. I imagine the permitting for both the county and state takes two years. There's a lot of easements and a lot of things already in the ground. Um, it's just to actually build capacity takes money and effort. So is there, is there any sentiment on the board that there should just be no, no, we should be a no growth community, residential. Letter. If you're asking what is the board's opinion that gets down to individuals, mm -hmm. 
Uh, I'll say our mayor has publicly come out. He wants to grow the town. Um, for the rest of the board, I'll let them speak for themselves. Do they ever, do they ever canvas the community on that question? Uh, they have not canvassed the community. They assume the election is that canvas. Okay. I mean, they just pulled in six trailers in the middle school. I, I understand the high school is so, near capacity. The elementary is way over capacity. So the, the current, I guess, statement from the town is if you own land and you have a right to build on it, um, and you meet the land use code, it is against the law for us to stop you. Well, so the I thing, so the, so the so the thing that would have to change is changing the land use code, making it onerous enough to raise the price of the home beyond what people would markedly want to buy, um, or uh, not get more water which is reducing or like what Boulder does is Boulder limits the taps. So no, no new taps, no new buildings. Well, the, so I mean, so, so there's two options, but doesn't neither. the board really control that by the extension of, of municipal services as to whether there's gonna be large scale residential building? Um, as I said, if the current stance on the board is if uh, applicant meets the the rules of our land use code, we, we allow them to move forward. Uh, we have now created a land use committee and of citizens um, from various neighborhoods and they're going to propose new rules for a land use code. And again, as I said, you can make the land use code more onerous on the developer or less, which makes your developments either cheaper or more expensive. And the board has the option, as I said, on taps and offering utility services, which may stop development. Mm -hmm. But at the moment right now, the town has expressed a desire to get those taps or water as fast as we can. Obviously, uh, we've been stymied at the moment um, to get water. And there's probably no solution <clears throat> at the moment for at least some period of time. So politically, I think the town is, we, we do hear from citizens, many of them wanting to stop growth. And we do hear from others, they want the growth to accelerate. And I don't, and so I think it's been left as a political issue and as a ballot box issue. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of politicians want to distract from that debate, but that is definitely the debate going on since growth or non-growth changes how the town will uh, offer services, how we'll have to expand infrastructure or not expand infrastructure. So. One last question, I'm sorry. You, you, well, there just seems to be a lot about this whole water and it is, it is difficult because I still see, you know, grading going on, um, especially between um, north of your subdivision. Mm -hmm. Cole, um, what is that? Um, north of the middle school. So. Um, the neighborhoods that are right now that did get approval uh, and went through Platt, um, we do have water for them. And through hard negotiations with North Weld, we are, for everything that we've allowed through, we have water for every one of those homes. Um, so we are that solid has roads and sidewalks already in it. It, it, it. That's already beyond the point. But yeah, this is just, you know, if you've annexed into town and you've gone through the planning process through the board or uh, down the council, if you've made it through the first stage, we have water for you. Uh, if you've not made it through stage one, we have no water for you. Um, and that's the problem. So the one just north of town off of 74, that one will not have water. Is that correct? If I, the 800 homes there? I'm sorry, I don't know exactly which one, which neighborhood. If, if, Between 21 and 23. If you see a bulldozer on it, they have water. Okay, there's nothing there right now. 
but there's talk about the heaven home on the yeah. west side of Fox Ridge. Oh yeah, the journey home um, development. Journeys is trying to develop there, and yes, they are. Every board meeting, they tell us they want their water, and we tell them we don't have their water. Okay. All right. Thank you. I know that that happens to you every time, but you seem to be that's. This is, this is a very stressful. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, well, and we appreciate you being there. So thank you, the community did that. See, I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> it's really now we're gonna. Now we're gonna go to. Uh, now you're a council now, so you because you're home rule. Yes. Okay. And what are you? Are you home rule? Home. So you're also a council, town council. We're considered town board. Town board. Okay. <laughs> our official titles. So. I'm trying to just figure it out. So Julie Klein with the town of uh, Windsor. All right. Thank you. So a couple of things that I wanted to bring out is that. Over the past few weeks, there's actually been several incidences of vandalism at the parks and at the lake. So there's been some spray painting in some bathrooms. Mm -hmm. We had um, a fire set on one of the town boats. And so that just happened right around, yeah. So like I said, a couple of weeks back. So there's some, there are open cases. So if anybody listening or you know knows anything, you can call the Windsor Police Department there's still, like I said, open cases and looking for people. So it's just ticked up a lot in the last two weeks, which maybe coincides with a lot of the vandalism with some of the younger people being out, but don't know, that's some crazy stuff. So that, that's my only bad thing to say about today. <laughs> but otherwise we do have our summer concert series is in full swing at Barbara Park on Thursdays. And that starts 6.30 to 8.30. So I guess if we open the windows, we might actually be able to hear them right now. So um, it's, uh, and I have the whole schedule, but there, every Thursday there have different ones out tonight. Tonight's would be uh, actually is classic rock. And then next, next week will be like country rock, rock. We got a John Denver tri tribute in, on July 21st, uh, country funk, but it goes all the way through until August 18th is the last one. Um, also every Saturday at the Pavilion of Boardwalk Park from uh, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. We have our uh, uh, farmer's market going on. So it's, and also they have live music and food trucks at that farmer's market. So that one, it looks like this weekend, though they have a country that will be live music on Saturday morning. And then we have, a, like I said, another and a food truck there. But those are every Saturday and very good stuff at that. Um, July 4th, Monday. So, the fireworks will be back on over the lake again. Um, I know a couple of years back during COVID, we had it up at Green Dance, but that was also before there was numerous homes up there. Uh, but they'll be back over the lake, up over the lake. So on Sunday at 8.30, basically the dog park at the boardwalk park and just kind of leading up to it, since that's where they set up all the fireworks will be closed off. So you won't be able to go there on Monday morning for, you know, before on the 4th, and like I said, Sunday night after 8.30, because I'll be getting all the fireworks set up. Um, there will be also live music again down at the lake from 5.30 to 9.30, and it's the uh, 101st Army Band that'll be playing. And the fireworks should start around 9.15 or something on Monday night. So if your dogs don't like it, come in. Mine doesn't like fireworks, she hides in the closet. So <laughs> I think that's, a, that's also very good. Um, anyone that's living like north, of uh, Harmony, up there, Harmony Ridge kind of subdivision up there. The Avery substation by Excel actually went online last week. I think it was last Wednesday or Thursday. Um, they flipped on because there'd been some power surges and power outages kind of cycling through that area. Um, that station's now come online to help to service those areas so that we will get a lot better. If the new transmission line will help strengthen the grid, reliability, and resiliency, and deliver safe, reliable, that's of course from Excel, safe, reliable service you expect. <laughs> so uh, that was their information on that. Um, also kind of something that I thought of while you were, uh, while the town of Severance was talking, was that we actually have a um, comprehensive plan. We're going through usually a comprehensive plan. They do like every 10 years. Well, Santa Windsor has grown so much. We're actually looking at doing this. It's only, it's only our last comprehensive plan is only five to six years old. We're starting to redo it right now. 
And in that has land use codes, it has zoning, it has where do we think our vision is. And so anyone that's interested to be on that committee, because we also want to get some citizens input on that committee that's going to be working with the consultant, um, are welcome. If you know anybody, you can also, you can get a hold of me, you can get a hold of the town manager. Um, but we, we want some citizens input into that committee. So we run our numbers out to 2045. 2045, yep. So uh, that is that, my information. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate can, it. Can you uh, explain this referendum issue that I've, I've had people approach me in the park during concerts to sign a petition to put something on the ballot for man -wilers. What's that all about? So there is a citizen petition that is being circulated that is requesting to uh, create a permanent parking zone in the lots that are right behind Manweilers. It's kind of, it's owned by the DDA Association, by the Dampen Development Authority. And that's where people usually park right now. Some people we've called it the back lots and some other things like that. So this is citizen committee is trying to get, they needed 1,283 signatures in order for it to bring it in front of the board. Um, and once those are ratified, then the board will take it and put it on. If everything times right, it'll be on the November ballot and then everyone can vote on it. But it is to make that area and designate it a zoning that we don't have currently, but make it permanent park. So then nothing could be developed on it and only thing could be done. What, what's the current zoning for that? Uh, right now, I do think it's a, it's a commercial zone. Okay. I think so, it's, I think it's actually an MM. R, RM1, which is residential mixed use or commercial mm -hmm. mixed use, you know, so they could put a little bit of You could build townhouses or park. So, or commercial. To, to, beat, <laughs> out, to beat out a, a, a referendum, could the city just sell it right now before an election? Um, so the city doesn't own it. It's owned well, by the Downtown Development Association. But that's a public entity, isn't it? The Downtown Development Association is a non, I think they're a nonprofit. I, I don't quote me. I'm not sure how they are currently structured, operate, put together. <laughs> um, you know, but they so no because the petition is for that particular land, and so if they sold it to someone else, the for ours, I know I've not read the petition, zoning but then it would the right. zoning would go for those particular lots. Now, now this, the thing that they need to watch for, though, is that let's just pretend you own the, those lots. And if someone told you you could only park in those lots, how would you feel about that? You know, is that a constitutional, you know, now someone has made, <laughs> done something to you that <clears throat> is not, you know. So there's precedent out there, more than likely, if it does go to the ballot and if it does pass the ballot, then it can be challenged probably in court. The right to freely enjoy what you own. So, or develop on it. Or well, well that's enjoy. Yes. <laughs> so, so so yeah, so that's that even if they sold it, like I said, the petition goes with just those particular lots. Well, there's a lot happening in both towns. So that's why we ask a lot of questions. And again, it's not to beat you up, it's to be informed because we are a public board and we get asked questions that we don't really see coming our way and the better informed we are, the better we look as um, to our community and our district. So thank you for taking the time. I really wanted to hear from Aaron Smith. Actually. Well, there's a lot going on at the school board and unfortunately, Aaron, I don't know where he is tonight. So um, maybe next month, keep your questions. Um, all righty. Moving along to old business uh, reports from board members. I'm sorry. Um, I will say that we did have um, our training with Aaron Smith. Um, I don't know. Um, didn't get a lot of input. Do you walk away? No. Just um, we just did his training and um, explained. You know that you know the job is really um, you know get a clear understanding of you're the liaison looking for opportunities to work together um, and reporting back just like we just like we drilled you <laughs> so to to do that as well so we appreciate our liaisons very much um, did any other board members have anything yes you really wanted to back 
Yeah, but it's it's. <laughs> Uh, so we attended uh, CML, um, which is a conference for elected officials. I ended up talking to the uh, USDA. I think that's right. Um, basically, they have some money available um, through this infrastructure plan. And they said it was for towns under 10,000. Uh, and I said, oh, we're so close. And he said, no problem. We're considering your population when 2003 or 2005 yeah. is your population limit. So 600 here at that time. So for, for yeah, for, for the town of uh, Severance, that's, um, uh, you know, a pasture ago. Uh, so we, we, we barely existed. Um, so they have a, a pile of money for infrastructure loans, other things. I, I'm unclear, you know, what they're going to spend it on. They're supposed to enhance small towns, um, internet, uh, education, you know, rural community life. Which I, I did not quite broach that subject, but I think the libraries talked to USDA once before. We did um, when we were planning to build a library on Main Street. We were looking to loan money from them because the interest rate at that time from them was extremely low compared to the open market. So as I said, they, they have cash again. They were at the conference trying to get rid of their money. So I, a government entity trying to get rid of money, always a wonderful thing, at least yep. uh, if we can receive some. Thank you, Frank. Do you have a business card of anyone? I have a stack of paperwork and garbage, but I assume uh, I, I can find out who we need to talk to. All right, thank you. That's always good news. All right, anyone else have anything? Um, I, yeah, I just wanted to report back on the policy committee. Um, we've got that on here. Oh, it's on here, okay. I'll be, I can do that later then. <laughs> yeah, we have that. Um, we have you reporting, don't we? Oh. Business, yep. On our old business, okay. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah. We'll I be have, coming back to you. I have a question. When sure. is the policy, program policy gonna be? July. The July meeting, and we'll have it at least 14 days before. Right. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, any other board members who have any extra time? I, I think it's really hard because we have more ad hoc um, meetings than we've, I think, have had in many, many years. We've got the policy meeting, we've got the investment group, we've got um, the financial group. Um, I think it's hard and I, I keep preaching that we should and then I don't lead by doing it myself. So I'm gonna have to, I can't point any fingers other than back at myself. So I'll, uh, it's, um, but maybe try to catch something online if possible. I know, Anne, have you been going to anything? Cause you're just as busy as we are. I have not. It, it, it just seems like it's, cause you and I used to go several times together and it just seems like kind of crazy with all the other committees we've got going on. It's. Um, I think we're probably, you know, I think I put about 20 hours a week into um, servicing the library board. And not that I'm complaining, it's, it, it's a blessing to be able to do that. Um, and I like seeing with the results. So, all right, moving right along, old business, um, approve the minutes of the tw May 26, 2022 meeting. Does anyone have any questions or corrections on that? Move to approve. I, uh, um, Trustee Gershner has made a motion to approve the meeting notes. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, Trustee Dunworth has made a second. All approve of accepting the meeting notes from the May meeting. Say aye. 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 Those opposed nay. Moving right along. Facility plan update. Director Clean. So we will start the work on Ash Street on July 11th. So a couple more weeks. Oh, so um, we're doing our passwords and starting Ash Street yes. on July 11th. Okay. <laughs> That's right. So that'll be interesting to get them started. Uh, they'll be doing the tearing out the walls and doing all the deconstruction work. Um, we do have the filing cabinets in there right now. We had to take the filing cabinets from the veterinary medicine place and move them uh, out of there because they had sold their build that part of their building. So filing cabinets are currently in the Ash Street building and they'll have to be moved out of there by July 11th. So um, Friends and Pittman is loaning us one of their storage sort of connex trailers and we'll have to get them moved in there 
within like sometime next week, probably. And we are hiring movers this time. Brooke is working with us because Aaron um, and Bob and Natalie moved to them last time and it's hard work and dangerous for them to do that. So we'll have professional- Write offers. a check. Yes, we will. <laughs> uh, as far as uh, there is a uh, committee meeting tomorrow at Franz and Pittman at 10 o'clock and Kendra and Cole are gonna be there along with Beth and me and Casey virtually and Natalie has been attending those meetings. We'll be looking at the severance plan, which is getting close um, to being finalized. So we had uh, the architect ratio design had downsized the building to 9,000 square feet to try to save us money. And then we got the Dola grant and we asked them to upsize it back to 10,000 square feet because we need all the space we can get. So that's where our that. director saved the day. She came in on her little... I have money. <laughs> yes, we have money. And so let's get it back up there where it, it it's still going to be small, but we don't want it smaller than that. So um, design is getting really close and ratio is working really close with the town planning department with Abdul. And so uh, I think it'll go through the planning process a little quicker that way. Perfect. And as far as Windsor, they're doing the final tweaks. I mean, the plans went to the planning department, planning department had some questions and we've got to make some decisions tomorrow in the meeting about what we do about trying to cut costs. So um, the front doors, I think are going to be the big discussion tomorrow, the outer doors and the inner doors and what we're going to do about that because those are extremely expensive. You know, I just want a record too about that 9,000, 10,000 square foot chain. That's nothing, something we really discussed. I think he did it on his own hook, unless he authorized He it. did it, uh, I think, because, because he, was not... he was trying. Well, we, it, it sort of was discussed in the meeting. No final decision was made. And I think in the interest of trying to get the costs down, because we won't actually be building that building for another year. Um, and I think he's real concerned that we're not going to have the money that we need to do it if things keep increasing the way they've been increasing. Regardless so, of why he did it, I don't think he should do it on his own part. Right. It, sure. it was not transparent. I mean, yeah. it was mentioned at the meeting, two, two or three meetings I went to, and I finally leaned over to Ron and said, what are they talking about? 9,000. Well, he didn't know either. Other than what I heard there. Yeah. And so it's... the board was not involved in, in uh, that discussion. Or the committee, I think, it was, unless it was a sidebar. So. <laughs> No, I mean, I think Dennis did it in the interest of saving money because he knew how concerned you were about going over budget for the Windsor Library. And so he was trying to save money. I think his intent was well, um, but I think it came off flat. Um, you know, I don't think it was malicious in any nature. I think it just was something that um, for myself, I'll speak only for myself, I think, I would have been more comfortable if someone would have popped me an email and said, hey, is, if we, is it okay if we look, you know, we're thinking we might want to do a 9,000 square foot library. What is your thought? And that communication failed. And, you know, 90% of all problems can be um, taken care of with a little bit of communication. And I do think that's where the, there was a break in that. And um, I don't, I think being taken by surprise by, the committee, um, there's three of us that are rotating through for, um, because it is a big commitment it's every other week, a lot of work. Um, I, I just don't think it felt good. I think it, you know, and, and, and bygones are bygones. We're gonna move forward, but I, I do think that was kind of an issue, but we'll move forward. I think my, my whole point of it is, is, I know I've been the biggest constant complainer about controlling costs. I'll buy into that, but. His attempt to control cost by reducing the size without telling us what he's doing is totally unacceptable. I'm not going to be as nice about the thing because the, the intent was to build a 10,000 square foot building, not to take it on his own hook to change the size because he thought we couldn't afford it. And that's, you know, uh, I stepped over that. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and lay that to rest for now. We can address again tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> Uh, moving on. Thank you. A anything else you wanted to? I'm sorry. Oh, we no, that's okay. we kind of went that, off on a tangent. We'll more tomorrow after tomorrow's meeting. Can okay. I add one more point? I think it's important that the board to hear know this and hear it. 
I brought up the fact that security for mm. our personnel and our clients during the course of the business day has suddenly become a national concern. And if you think about the position of this library this building specifically, in the fact that we're next to an elementary school, which seems to be primary targets in this craziness that's affected this country, I think it would behoove us to spend some time trying to determine what we could do to enhance the security procedures and processes for this empire, for this building, for our employees and for our our, uh, our constituents or whatever you want to call them. All right. And uh, it's not something we want to discuss in the aftermath of what we should have done, but I think we should spend some time trying to determine what we can do and also what we can build into, if possible, costs to implement some security here and some procedures here, and also plan for expanding security and maintaining security on the secure on the uh, severance facility. And my understanding, and I'm not going to go into this too far, is there may be some grants and other things for that type of um, control or uh, prevention, but I'm not sure where those are yet, um, and I, whether they're from, coming from the federal government or not. But there has been talk for schools, and we're hoping libraries would file under that. So we'll see. That's a wait and see. But we are um, looking into those things. Ash, Ash is a total lockdown facility, isn't it? Right. The doors won't ever be open to the public there. Right. They'll be closed yeah. all the time. But yeah. you know, if you have an AR-15, you can shoot through those locks in a heartbeat. <clears throat> yeah, so. but if you have film on the glass, an AR-15 will penetrate, but the glass will stay. And the intent would be to slow it down and modifying those locks to electronic locks that can be triggered by, you know, a panic button would be something that we have to look at in order to, you're not going to be able to defend the building, but you can slow people down. And I think with the size of our community and the relative closeness to the police station, I mean, Nash is half a block away. I'd be more concerned about this facility and severance, but slowing them down and allow our police departments to respond adequately would be the primary factor that I would like to make sure we can do. Because I really don't want to have a meeting here saying about how are we going to cover our butts because three people were killed in a parking lot or something like that. I think it's important and we appreciate it. Um, uh, Trustee Dunworth brought this up in our meeting for facilities um, uh, two weeks ago tomorrow. So um, I think it really hit home with everyone that this is a concern and we need to um, look at that. So moving on, um, Jeremy, you went on to speak earlier, yep, Trustee sure. Balderrama, <laughs> would you please report on the ad hoc committee? Yep, so we had our first meeting um, back on June 16th uh, and Ann and Frank and I had an opportunity to go through and, and talk through what we saw as our, um, our first steps in terms of proceeding. Uh, and we are, have drafted, are working on a draft right now of a, a policy adoption procedure that we're gonna be presenting to the board. Um, we're hoping to do it this month, but uh, I think there's a little bit more tweaking we want to do before, before we present it. So we'll, we'll present it. I think we're going to hope to present that next month. Will that be out two weeks before the meeting so we can review it before it goes out to the as we'll, part of the we'll notes? make sure it gets out there ahead of time. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, and then uh, and then with that, uh, just incorporating. So really, it's just defining how, how we as a board uh, will consider the policies. Um, the first, re you know, op opportunity for a second reading. Uh, what happens if we have additional questions, if, if, uh, if the policy needs to be amended or changed um, based on feedback and, and so forth. So it's really kind of spelling all that out. So um, I think it's I a great idea. Any, yeah. I don't know, Frank, if you had any, or Ian, if you had any uh, feedback or. No, I think it was great to have Frank there because Frank has a lot of experience with the town policies. And so, mm -hmm. you know, using some of the procedures they have will be valuable uh, yep. if that's what the board is chooses there, to is do. Is your policy considering uh, a waiver to adopting things that are not in controversy or it's, so it provides so I'll, yeah we're still drafting it but what i would say is that we're providing opportunity for a second reading if further discussion is needed if if there's not if, if the policy is pretty cut and dry and nobody at the, and no board member asks for a second reading we could adopt it on, on okay. first reading there right. so yeah all right Thank you. And thank you for taking that on. We sure. appreciate it. All right. Well, thank you to Frank and Ann for all, all they've done. Well, we're very lucky. We have a great board and we have uh, all of us doing our share is uh, um, very important. So thank you. Um, 
annual, so going on to new business, annual review of investments that goes back to our treasurer, um, Trustee Dunworth. So Cole and I have met with the treasurer for Will County and uh, it was a very disappointing meeting from the standpoint of he had no great options or opportunities for us. It was kind of like, sorry guys. Uh, so with that bit of news, I've asked and talked to some professional financial companies that I've known in Denver, and they actually sent me three proposals that were effectively their understanding of what we want, which is a way to take our cash and make money off of it in a safe manner. And they suggested some annuities. I forwarded them a call for review, and an annuity is typically a longer term instrument, and they're available to us. So they do qualify under Colorado law, library law, according to the book. We haven't double checked all that. Effectively, where you take money and you invest it for five years, and penalties take it out, and they guarantee the principal plus a minimum interest amount, which is something we can consider or look at once we know them better. And Cole and I talked, and Cole suggested I reach out to the Colorado Trust people and set a meeting appointment to get a better understanding of what they're doing and what they plan to do as part of this whole process. So it's nothing very positive yet. Uh, and then with the way the market's going and has been for the last 30 some odd days, it's, it's really scary out there right now. So we have to make sure that one, we don't violate call out or library line and we do. And typically we're going to probably end up sticking with you know, tried and true methods and stuff in order not to try to break new ground with the library's money because in the end, um, effectively we're losing eight to nine percent a year in terms of uh, value of power of that money just through, through inflation. But uh, we have to attempt to do something because when times were good, we were making we were making three thousand dollars on seven million dollars in the bank. You know, seriously. Mm -hmm. This doesn't seem to work. It seems to be doesn't be fair to the library. We should be able to get more for that kind of cash. So we're going to continue to work at it. Right? Yep. May, may I interject? Please. Okay. Please. Well, I want to say I, I was just bringing information because uh, another committee that I'm a liaison to, we actually started an endowment, and we worked through the and that's what I was getting the Weld County is Weld Community Foundation. And so we set up an endowment and you could set up at as low as $20,000. And then what it would do is then that sets that amount and then someone can gift it to you. And then you, you can raise your limit of how much you spent, you know? So, I mean, we're hoping in, and this is the Peter Trail corridor board that we were doing it is that we have $20,000 that someone puts into that endowment. We don't touch that money, you know, it sits there and you can only spend like what you make on it. And people can donate to it and things like that. But they have really good, and I know you were talking about it with your friend. <laughs> so yeah. it, it was, it was, and they invested for you. They have their investments. They have their endowment. So we have so limitations and we have to have. But where is the principal for this coming from? <laughs> it's not, it's not taxing. Uh -uh. Well, yeah, I mean, that's yeah, the. It's donations. Yeah. Well, but we're a public entity. We have a statutory overlay that tells us what we're allowed to invest in and it's terribly conservative it's all almost all u.s securities whereas private foundations can they can buy junk bonds if they want to and they're only going to be subject to you know their board and, and uh but we're we're i mean we we're can go we can, yeah we can go to jail if we would invest things that are not. And I don't know, our... since it's the, the Weld Community Foundation, if they, maybe they have a separate portion. Do you have or... a name we can contact and try I will, uh, So Ron, we and... did, that's who the Friends and Foundation spoke to. It's Randy Morgan is in charge. He came with his assistant and I can't remember her name. Do you remember and the Russia? Friends and Foundation could probably make They could, well, yes. Absolutely. And and there are rules. Once you put the money in there, as we found out at the Friends and Foundation meeting, it is in there forever. You can't you can't take it out. It is there for eternity. But, but you live a, on the an interest. Investment mechanism, right? Mm -hmm. They so invest. What guarantees the principal? They they're very. They have very strict. They have a financial advisory board, and and they're looking at investments. I think that's part of the reason the friends and foundation are a little leery because. They don't look for risky things. They want a guarantee on the money that's in there. 
So they might make four to five percent a year where, you know, in the market, you might be getting 10, 12, 13, 15, and you're living off the interest forever. So it works really well for something like the Pooter Trail. It, that's where the Clearview Reads money that Vince Murphy donated is in the Wealth Community Foundation. And the $5,000 that we get every year is the interest on that 100,000. So there's a 5% draw that, that, that traditional was, return you know they say we can get oh i think they threw out like eight or nine they said but for you guys we'd be looking at like five percent then we take one person administrative fee so you're going to get every year on you know your whatever however much you want to your hundred thousand gets you four grand yeah but but you just never can touch that money which mm -hmm. i get it if you want to just you know fund scholarships year after year after year that's great but there's something like what we're doing to just tie it up in the endowment. I don't even know if that's legal for libraries. Whereas for the uh, was that was that what Vince said he wanted a permanent? Fund? He wanted it because he wanted it to be there in perpetuity yeah. to honor his wife, right. and he wanted it to grow because prior to that, um, the Friends and Foundation he he would not release more than four or five thousand dollars per year because he was in control of the money. He said, I will give it to you, but he didn't want the Friends and Foundation to put the money into a CD that might get 1%. And so he said, in order to honor my wife from now until forever, I want this money and I'll give it to you if you invest it with the Wealth Community Foundation. And so that's you know, what they did. When you make an investment for that long of a period, over 20 years, you will show a net profit. Yes. But if you have money invested in the shorter term instruments that we're forced to deal with, mm -hmm. you're subject to the vagaries of the of the market, which means it could go up 20, it could go down 50, like it did in the last 30 yeah. days. <laughs> and uh, you know, your market's lost five, four and a half percent of its liquidity in the last 30 days. When you're talking trillions of dollars, that's money. So I think any ideas we can look at and if you forward at this, we'll investigate it. I mean, no stone and turn kind of an attitude because we do have cash and we're sitting on cash and we're losing the value of that cash and they can have to find percent a year. And that's unacceptable. The investment has to be an insured investment or? Uh, well, I mean, we have way too much. It's not sure. assured that, that there are just certain vehicles and certain types of things we have to do. I'll be glad to forward a packet to you to look at it. I'll, like I'll, I'll take that. a look if it's not too long, but uh, no, I, I you mean, know, we, there we are some investments. Sachs and people like that and large banks that are on the crude list and we can do an annuity, but the annuity requires a five year commitment. And we have to make sure that we have that same power to take that investment and hold it in an investment for five years, not need it. There might be other things to play and they guarantee a certain amount of things. And they have other investments that have a 40% loss back out, meaning you can lose 40% of the value for the investment without having touching the principal. They'll take it good. But then after that, they come after our money to pay it. And so there's just a lot of things you have to look at because okay. uh, I'm finding out there's no such thing as a free lunch. And everything has everything has a potential downside. Yeah. And I think we we as a group have to look at the potential downsides. And if we can minimize it, maybe it's worthwhile to invest some of our money as long as we follow. Colorado law. Yeah. Where, Frank, where does the severance leave in? They bury it in the back. Um, <laughs> the it's reality, a lot. We're going to yeah. find it. Three. <laughs> in my opinion, we are burying our money in water, uh -huh. which is a legal buy for us because we're investing in our future needs. But uh, we know sometime in the future we'll sell that off to developers. And so water is it kind of avoids some of the legal problems that you have with tax money. Um, buying land is another object that we, uh, but our CDs are basically garbage. I mean, we have money in CDs, liquid, and that's short-term CDs. You know, a, 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 what do you call that? A, we, you shoot one off every quarter or something like that. Well, um, County has big money and he showed us kind of what they got from it and it's pretty, and they had different 300, he had them like over 300. We've seen them like 20. Yeah. yeah. So, and it's, it's so the return on their, I'm going to say 11 billion. So I would say that, yes, severance is gambling, but we're gambling on our own land. We're gambling in water. We're, we're investing in 
from the southwest and the way the world's going, water is not a bad investment. Well, but, but it's a legal investment towns can yeah. do because oh, it's like investing in books for a library, but I don't, I'm not sure how you <laughs> make money on that. You know, I think we have larger regulations. We face stiffer regulations in our business than probably the towns and, and We don't have to leeway because if we bought water, we'd just slap. But, <laughs> but no, we need Jay water. So. Right. right, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Perhaps, Trustee Edwards, comment. Dave? Yeah, I'm going to address Trustee Edwards' comment. Yeah, I'm going to address Trustee Edwards' comment. To address Trustee Dunworth's comment, the uh, same statutes apply to the uh, to municipalities and other uh, subdivisions of government in the state of Colorado. Most of the ones that I know of are investing in Colorado, uh, use Colorado Trust. The, uh, and, and any of these jurisdictions can use these other sorts of investments like land or water or equipment or whatever, <clears throat> but it has to have a governmental use. So uh, as we've talked, uh, as you've heard uh, Trustee Bassler talk about, water is a major issue for uh, severance. And, and so there is a governmental need and, and, and use that uh, they would have in buying water that we may not have. That's a book binding company. <laughs> I, I think it, it's, it, we, I try to make a joke of it, but it's just so frustrating <coughs> understanding what our cash position is and how we can leverage that. And, I, and without what I believe to be, you know, abnormal risks, but we're hamstrung by the laws and well, county with $11 billion plus before they issue refunds or send money out to, to, to the groups, they have really no, I would call it effective vehicle for doing it. Uh, He's picking up pennies on that kind of money. I, I would agree that it is a troublesome problem. Um, I, I have watched um, our, our certificate of uh, participation games that lawyers have played. And I have wondered if there's a way to shuffle money around at the state level. Um, but beyond that, I'm not an attorney, um, but there are ways to play games. There are ways. If, to play. If, you know, I mean, between attorneys that, that shuffle money, but I, I don't see a vehicle right now other than Colorado Trust right now as a, as a way to. Well, I'm consumed by it. I, mean, I saw the two young ladies out there, you know, signing people up. Like, I had visions of sitting the table up out there myself. And setting up a loan shark business for the library to, to people who come through and need cash to do things that they can't get traditionally. You know, it's crazy. It's just it's very frustrating. We have money. We want to make more money off of it before we have to go spend it on the projects that we have scheduled. Well, thank you for the update. And I'm so glad you two men or gentlemen are on the uh, committee. Um, and so we appreciate your time and effort. Um, moving right along, Director Kling, we're going to come right back at you. You don't get a rest tonight. We're going to talk about the 2023 closure, holiday closures for this um, library. So these are pretty standard. We've been doing the same holidays for at least the past 10 years. Um, January 1st is New Year's Day. April 9th is not a paid holiday, but the library does close because it's Easter. May 28th and 29th, we close for Memorial Day weekend. The staff have a paid holiday for Monday. Um, they don't get paid for Sunday because they don't normally work on Sunday. July 4th next year is a Tuesday. It would be closed and that is a paid holiday. Uh, Labor Day weekend is the third and fourth. Uh, Monday is the paid holiday for the full-time staff. However, some of the full-time staff end up working with the bookmobile at Boardwalk Park or Main Park for Harvest Festival uh, and being in the parade. So if they do work, they take another day off during that pay period. And a Wednesday before Thanksgiving, we close early because no one bothers coming in. Everybody's thinking about all that turkey that they're gonna eat. Uh, we're closed on Thanksgiving day, and then we are closed on the 24th and 25th. Those are both paid holidays. We will have staff working on the 26th because the holiday falls on a Sunday, we will have full-time staff will be up on the 26th. The building will actually be open, but we'll operate with our part-time staff and two full-time staff who will then take another day off during the pay period. Um, the library is open to the public on all the other federal and state holidays, Martin Luther King Day, President's Day, Juneteenth, Columbus Day, or 
St. Francis Cabrini Day in Colorado and Veterans Day. And the staff do get two floating holidays, which they can use at their discretion. And those were in place of President's Day. And we used to be closed the day after Thanksgiving, which seemed like a, a foolish thing to do. Um, so how many paid holidays are there? We have seven plus the two floating, so nine. nine. Mm -hmm. um, do you think it behooves us to stay open till 6 p.m. on Thursday, on Wednesday before um, Thanksgiving? To me, it would seem prudent to go ahead and just sh shut the doors at four o'clock. I just can't imagine. <laughs> we, we do get people who have to work that day and run in at the last minute to pick up holds so they can watch movies on Thanksgiving day. So okay. we just have a minimum number of people. We don't staff it heavily, just oh. enough to keep. If there's people coming, then you're doing the right thing. I just didn't know that. Yeah. And I, to me, I'm like, I'm not coming to the library. I'm, I'm cooking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I got fired from cooking this year. So um, I'm not crying yet. Any other concerns or questions about that? No. All right. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, holiday closures for next year. A second. Okay, we've got a motion by Trustee Brodsky and a second by Trustee Balderrama. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. All right, motion passes unanimously. All right. To um, increase liability insurance, Trustee Gershner and Director Queen. Who would like to start that conversation? I believe we have a member memorandum in our packet. I'm not sure what page it is. 22 online. 22 online. I will turn it over to Cole because yeah. this was something he pointed out. Um, Beth, could you bring that up at all? Yeah, please. Thank you. <clears throat> This is kind of um, no back up. Next one more. There we go. So go ahead, uh, Trustee Gershner. Yeah, uh, some months ago, I, I looked at our insurance policy and I, the uh, the overall auto was the one that jumped out at me. We had a million dollar coverage. Keep in mind, we have a countless number of employees that are out driving for work. We're soon going to have three facilities that are going to drive to and from. Uh, any accidents that occur when they're still working is, is uh, puts the library as a defendant. And so, uh, anyways, our coverage, I thought, was extremely insufficient. We have a lot more than a million dollars of assets. <clears throat> so, uh, and approached our uh, insurer and got some quotes, essentially an umbrella policy, which the, the, the quotes are on the next page. So, not the one more page. There you go. Thank you. Just added to add a $3 million umbrella, which would not just cover auto problems, but uh, uh, we had an explosion and some people in here got hurt and it could be countless things, but uh, uh, the $3 I'm million dollar, um, umbrella, you can see the price there. So I would recommend you do that. That includes like slipping on the ice. Yeah. Could be, yeah. Well, I'd also like to point out that one of those is a big van that's driving, and the other one is a bus. Um, you know, you could consider nefarious things by an employee could get you drawn into litigation. There's countless ways you could be a defendant, but um, that would, at least for the car, that would essentially. Uh, have we would have up to four million for would that cover the bus and the van yeah okay thank Our you vehicle plus you know personal autos are used a lot for employees they go to they go to the g5 for trivia night 
they go to, I mean, they, they get, they're all over the place. Right. They go to the assisted and living facilities. And going to drive to Ash and back here. And then, you know, lots of employees are out moving around more and more. And then um, I, one of our board members that I said, they concurred that they had an umbrella far more than a million dollars of assets. So, you know, if you don't want to protect your assets, uh, say where we're at. But. I think it's really important. Um, does anyone have a comment between the 3 million, 2 million, um, and 1 million where we're at currently? Does anyone have a feeling on any of those? Could I hear? Um, uh, Trustee Gershner has um, recommended the three million. Does anyone want to question that or comment upon that? Hey, what do you, what you got any thoughts on on sufficient coverages? I, I, my thoughts are uh, my thoughts are these are uh, look pretty uh, reasonable. These uh, quotes do, and uh, yeah, you've got uh, with additional buildings. And, uh, and, and yes, the, the people moving from, from spot to spot, we are, we are gonna have uh, more opportunities and more staff. No, go ahead. So, yes, I, <laughs> uh, yes, umbrellas are a wonderful idea. Um, I just, usually they want the base and I do see you mentioned the base is gonna go up um, a little bit, but. Uh, what, what's What's the town severance? What's their liability amounts? I don't know. I'll be honest, I don't know the numbers. Um, we may self-insure, I have one clear. Um, but I, I do do wonder, as the base you said it's 98 bucks uh, to get us to the min coverage number. And I assume that's gonna go up again uh, for when we get additional uh, facilities on board. Okay. Yeah, I, I also, the, the money the money is uh, well reasonable. So I also noted that I thought we needed to take a close look to make sure that our facilities are properly insured because we're soon going to have three of them. You're talking about like fire. Yep. Fire, etc. Tornadoes. I think some of us here have been um, affected by the 2008 tornado and or other um, casualties and um, know that um, insurance is um, extremely important. Um, I personally am a strong believer in making sure um, insure, that we're insured. I do have a question for Director Kling. Um, I know in the past when I used my personal vehicle for um, business, uh, I was required to keep X amount. Um, my, I'm trying not to sneeze, I'm sorry. Um, my brokerage house um, for my real estate business required me to turn in my minimum coverage. Do we have anything like that for our employees? We do not. We don't ask them to provide a driver's license or proof of insurance or any of those things. We don't know if they're even insured? No. We don't know if, we don't know if they're even have a lawful license? We do not. For the bookmobile, okay. we would do that. Um, and for the van, but we, we don't do that you know, when they use their personal vehicles. I would suggest that maybe we have a policy on that. Um, I'd go to our attorney Garcia for recommendation on that. But I think if we are having employees um, using their vehicle, I think it would behoove us to make sure they had some sort of insurance in order to get their per diem for their miles. Um, I mean, they have, to, they have to at least comply with the state's uh minimum liability. And I, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying we have to do something, yeah. but I, I do think having insurance would be who, um, because now we have, it, depending upon what we do, a $3 million umbrella, but we have an uninsured motorist. I don't think that goes hand in hand. I think if we're going to say we're going to get an umbrella, then we also should make sure anyone doing the library business has current insurance and just have you, that updated. The, the umbrella is not UM coverage. There's UM coverage still with the million that we had. I just think, you know, um, I think what we're doing is we're coming from a very small town to a town that's growing, and we see Main Street as a parking lot um, at five o'clock. I think it's important 
when we're driving through a growing town such as Windsor that we make sure that those representing us and um, we're covering um, also have personal coverage. I'm sure they all do. I, I'm probably um, preaching to someone who, you know, is going to be, oh yeah, here it is, not a big deal. But I, I do think we should have that of record. And do, do employees get reimbursed for using their personal? So you they, do for they, mileage? Yeah, the IRS mileage rates. Okay. Yeah. Which, count, which also considers your insurance sure. and your maintenance yep. and all Fair of enough. that. So um, I would suggest that, I guess, to our policy writers. <laughs> um, I don't yep. think we need a policy. You it's don't. just a procedure. It's just yeah. a, you know, you just say anybody who is requesting reimbursement, you know, mileage reimbursement needs to provide us with proof of insurance for their vehicles. It's probably every yeah. year, right? So. And, and you also want to add that in the employment expectations. Right, so right. That's the employee yeah, employee internal employee. one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the the other thing, um, and I am not sure if libraries can access this, but there's SIRSA, uh, which insures towns. Um, and I think almost all towns are part of SIRSA um, as our insurance provider. So I, I don't know if library districts are allowed in or not. I'll find out, Frank. Thank you. Um, they, they're basically a nonprofit run by pseudo state uh, statute, and they they audit you. They're they're kind of semi vicious, but uh, they do definitely pay their claims, and they do have attorneys to to help defend you. And the town is, I know the town of Severance is is fully covered by SIRSA, uh, and they. They've settled some claims for us. They've uh, employee issues, road issues, whatever. They they basically do the government deal. That's that's their whole insurance business. Well, can't, it's not a business. Uh, yeah, I think almost everyone. Poor Collins. Poor Collins does not. They do not. Oh, okay. And this is why we have our liaisons. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right, moving on, do we have, we have no discussion. I think uh, Trustee Gershner has recommended the 3 million um, uh, umbrella. Do I have a motion? I move that we uh, take the, uh, the suggestion to consideration and the fine work and uh, move for $3 million umbrella policy. We have a motion on the floor by Trustee Dunworth. Do we have a second? I second. Uh, Trustee. Balderrama at second. Um, all in favor of going ahead and moving forward with the three million umbrella, say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Um, that motion passes and we'll be putting in place the three million dollar um, umbrella. All right, next up, we have a memorandum for financial policies and procedures. Um, and that's um, Director Clean, first reading. So when we reviewed our bylaws, Thank we discovered that some of the things we put in our bylaws really shouldn't be. And we talked about having financial policies. Um, this, these would be the first two. If we ever do have investments, we would have an investment policy. The procurement policy would become part of our financial policies. And so we, I drafted something, Aaron and I worked on something, we drafted it. We sent it to Ron. I'm gonna give you his red lines on those policies. I did not include those in the packets. So we could have a discussion tonight. We can make a decision as to what you want the language to be. And as we do that, can we take a uh, 10 minute break and grab some cake in honor of our attorney and reconvene in 10 minutes? Uh, take a few minutes to read the red lines. Um, so it is currently, I can't read the time, 6.58, we will reconvene at 7.10, and we're going to um, read over this policy and red lines, and then come back, so. Maybe we should eat his cake while we That's what we're doing, yeah. we're going to read his cake, <laughs> and we're going to celebrate our, our attorney. So with that, we'll, um, please end the meeting, for we'll be back at 7.10. All right. Okay, um, it is 7-11, and it is Jen, uh, 
June 30th, and we're going to continue with the regularly scheduled programming, i.e. Um, Clearview Library District a meeting, board meeting. You didn't like my programming? <laughs> All right. So while we were out, we did um, toast our, with cake, our uh, attorney. Thank you, everybody. Absolutely. If we have a cake every year, every month, are you a new year? <laughs> <laughs> What's Beth's birthday next month? It's Beth's birthday. My birthday's in three days. Oh, well, it's not on the board. You mean. You're not helping us. Um, okay, so we did have two redlined items. I think we're doing the cash management first. Start, start with the credit card one because that's easier. Okay. Um, most of what Ron had redlined in the credit card was incorporated. So in the first, um, the director may authorize the issuance of credit cards with the approval of the board. So you'll see that that was added to the policy that you got in your board packets. So I, I don't think that that's a bad thing for the board to know who has credit cards. I'm not arguing that. Um, what, what do we use credit cards for? Quite a few things. Uh, right now, we currently have three cards. I have a card, Beth has a card, Casey has a card. We use them if we go to conferences so that we can you know, pay for our eating expenses and sometimes our airfare and even our registrations. Mm -hmm. A lot of the companies that Beth deals with, like Newegg and some of the technology companies will only take credit cards, they don't invoice. So when we're buying equipment, small equipment, this isn't you know thousands and thousands, this is some little piece breaks and you need to get a replacement for it. Um, and they don't invoice you. So Beth will use her credit card for that. Um, if we're buying food for a meeting, you know, and we go to the store, we'll put it on the library credit card instead of asking for a reimbursement for it. Some of the subscriptions we have to newspapers, they no longer invoice either. They just want a credit card like the New York Times says, you know, put your credit card in. So it's, it's a combination of, things for the patrons, things that we need for staff meetings, and then travel expenses. Um, when someone has a death in the family and we buy flowers for them, we put them on the credit card. And then what happens is, so with the three cards that we currently have, the total limit on the three cards is $10,000. On my card, there's 4,000. And then on Beth's and on Casey's, there's 3,000 for a total. The bill comes, it's through the Bank of Colorado. Um, the bills come, Aaron has to have a receipt for everything. And then I have to sign off on those before she pays the bills. So without a receipt, we wouldn't, you know, we would be questioning. And, you know, I know there was the issue in Poudre Library District recently where an outreach person put things on her credit card but there was a lot of, you know, doctoring invoices and other things that happened there. Um, I think Eric, you know, Aaron would see if an invoice looked doctored. So um, I would recommend that, you know, eventually like Chrissy should have a card because a lot of times when she's ordering printed materials, they also don't invoice, they require a, a credit card. Then she has to come and get me to approve it before she can buy things that she needs. So I would recommend that she have it. And then I also think that Natalie and Aaron need cards because a lot of times the staff will come looking for me and say, Ann, can you put this on the credit card? It would be better if they could go to Natalie or Aaron. And the and same rules would apply, you know, that invoices have to be um, submitted. I mean, receipts, receipts have yeah, to be receipts. submitted before we pay the, the bill. And, and they, they're really good about fraud alerts. Um, for example, last week I got a phone call and said there was a fraud alert. My card somehow got hacked. The number was used uh, for a makeup company in Illinois. <laughs> and so they call you and they freeze the card and then ask you to call and verify that you actually made the purchase. So the bank is good about that. Mm -hmm. um, but so that was the first change and all credit card holders are to submit receipts. That was one of Ron's changes. I incorporated that one. And then Ron added the last bullet point that says we are tax exempt. 
And so if we're purchasing, we should have a tax exempt form with us so that we don't get charged the taxes that we don't have to pay. That works real well in Colorado. It doesn't work so much when you travel um, to other states for conferences. They don't accept Different state tax laws. exempt. Yeah. yeah, it really applies to purchases more than anything. Yeah. I think it's a fair ask. Right. Regardless of how you look at the policy, I think it protects the individual who has the cards as much as it protects the library. And having reconciliation and receipts mm -hmm. provided monthly with our exposure is no more than the total. Yeah. Um, Do you have a question? So, sure. And so these credit cards or debit cards? Credit. 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 And totally so, separate from the bank. So, so the question then is, do we, it seems like it's implied here that we pay this, we pay it off every month. Yeah, is absolutely. That, do we need to state that explicitly? Say that again. Do, so it's implied, in, when well, I'm reading this, it's implied we pay it, we pay it in full every month? Every month, yeah. But I'm not sure if it needs to be explicitly stated in here or not. I, again, well, I'm not sure. I guess may I speak? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I say. Uh, well, I guess I was just looking. It's just called credit card use, not necessarily. Oh, okay. How you're paying it off? You know, okay. I mean, I, I, at least that's the way I was kind of reading. It's just more the usage or the being able to to possess one. Okay. My question, my question was credit cards used. I would, I would personally, um, credit cards used for personal use risk um, termination. Um, criminal prosecution. Um, I, I, I think credit cards are not to be used for personal use. Well, what's the ramification? Um, do, you, do we need to put that in this specific thing or would that be something we would do like in a separate? I don't know. I'm it, asking. it might be an yeah, employment agreement. You know, that might be more appropriate there. Right. Okay. Anybody that's issued one is going to sign something, I assume. <laughs> You have to the bank. No, you're talking like no, as far about, like in we use it for personal or some kind of yeah, that's we can do that. We can just make up something. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you mentioned needing three more cards. Is that correct? Yes, I would recommend that so Chrissy, Aaron, and Natalie as office manager. And Natalie also orders all of our supplies. Okay, I don't have a problem with that, but what limit are we talking about? Are we a uh, total limit of 15,000 or 16,000 or 19,000? Well, Natalie and Aaron, probably a thousand on theirs would be plenty. And then Chrissy, I, when Katie was here, there were some times when she ordered publications, printed publications that were as much as like $3,000. So I would say 3,000 should be safe. So additional 5,000 is what I'm hearing. Okay. Yeah. A family credit card that has a limit for the user family, right? Mm -hmm. Does it matter what the limitation is individually? They actually want us to have it. So each credit card has a specific limit. So you we want that? that's how they want it to show up. Overall, the Who's card they? the bank. bank. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, it shows we have a limit of ten thousand, but each card is different. I think it's a really good catch. I think it's really safe for the the employee to have a stop the zone. I, I, I think I personally, if I were in, say, your shoes, Aaron, and I knew I can only spend a thousand dollars a month, you know, on this credit card, I would feel less uh, 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 liable, you know, because um, I've lived on a budget. Because I, have you met my husband? Um, <laughs> so, but I see budgets as a good thing. I see them as a positive thing. So. Um, it does help because you kind of monitor what's going on your credit card. If you didn't do that, it, we could always have our cards blocked because somebody would have gone over their limit or they put a whole bunch of stuff on there and then somebody else goes to use it and it's already at the 10,000 or 15,000 limit. So I think it's good to, the bank asks for a limit yeah. on each particular card. I agree. Um, I don't think that's something we have to address. That was more of a curiosity. I think, I don't think um, this is part of the motion to how much would be that. I don't think that's part of the motion. Um, does anyone, as far as um, reading this, does anyone have any questions or do we have a motion? Well, these are eventually reconciled monthly. So our total exposure never exceeds that number. Reconciled, please decide on. 
Oh, wait, every month they paid off. Uh -huh. Yep. But that wouldn't be on this. I don't think that's an internal. Just, that, was a, that was a use. Yeah, this yep. talks about use more than what you reckon. So. Yep. Yeah. So. so again, I'll ask, do we have more discussion on this particular one or do we have a motion? No, I move that we accept the credit card use procedure document with Ron's revisions. Okay, we have a second. motion by um, Balderrama and a second by Gershner. All in favor of accepting this credit card use policy, say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Okay, that's unanimously accepted. Um, going to the cash management. So the cash management had more discussion in it. Um, and so I did not incorporate Ron's red lines into the cash management one. So you need to look at them side by side. I will, if I can go ahead and start the discussion, mm -hmm. Director Kling. I'm not sure if um, I understand where Ron's going with the first red line. Um, I would be okay um, um, at the library director and then just, or assign E's in assign E. Just one assign E in your absence. Um, that would do. Would that work for you, Ron? Well, if you have an assignee, by definition, that assignee would have to be registered with the bank. We'll have to fill out a card. We'll have to have their signature online. But once you do that for multiple individuals, they are probably all signatories, meaning they can all sign. I don't know how you would control what you're suggesting. Okay. So I, I think right now our bylaws state the director treasurer and another board member, which my assumption would be you, because you are, you right. have a signatory card. I do. Only, and then we had two specific employees. And my concern about the specific employees, I think as biggest concern is who's going to sign if I'm on vacation, which is valid. My answer is either you or I, or it can be done on a scheduled basis. I can stop by every other day, and you can stop by every other day. And we won't be able to sign a check Tuesday, but we can sign them all in. Except uh, for those two weeks when Kendra's in Arizona. <laughs> then I will stop by. I will stop by every other day. I, Sorry. I, I, I just, I'm just concerned with the amount of cash we do have and the potential for any issues arriving. And again, it protects the employees just as much. So I, I get I get your concern, but there are times when you aren't going to be available, and there are times when our staff are pretty good about planning ahead of time, but every once in a while, being human, they forget. And an example of this was last week when the aquarium was coming up, the and Nancy, the aquarium was coming up to do a program, and Nancy totally forgot to get a check from Aaron, and she called Aaron at like you know, in the evening and said, I need a check first thing tomorrow morning. And Aaron called me and said, are you coming into the library tomorrow morning? I said, yes, I am. But if I had been on the East Coast visiting my family, then, you the know, she would have- Time frame was really, really tight. Right, time frame was tight. So she would have then just, you know, gone to Beth or to Casey and said, please sign this check for $200 for the aquarium. Um, and so if we, if we don't have- somebody in the building like Beth or Casey, then we have to call Ron and say, Ron, can you get here before the aquarium gets here so we can have a check or Kendra, mm -hmm. you know? And I think because you all travel, if we're gonna do that, if you're gonna say that like Beth and Casey who are very responsible people, they're managers, they are responsible for, you know, ILSs and, um, E-rate materials and Casey is is in charge of many many staff, and you don't give them that level of responsibility. Even if you say that they can only sign checks up to a certain amount, like a certain level, like Beth and Casey can only sign checks that are up to two thousand dollars. I don't think we've ever had a performer that charged us like that much money. Yeah. That way, we're not running to you. And at the very least, then I would say we should have Jeremy on there. So there's a third board member. So that if Kendra's in Arizona and Ron, you're taking care of family matters, Jeremy might be able okay. to be- I'm gonna interject for just a second. I'm sorry to interrupt you. That's okay. um, this is respectful, I'm sorry. That's okay. um, but I think we need to stop making it for this board. I think we need to, this board is not gonna be here forever. That's true. And I think we need to look at 
long-term and how's that going to work with future board members? If you get a, if this library, and not necessarily you, because you may not be here either, um, and I'm just gonna be like devil's advocate here, but we get a board that are Rochelle's that are at work eight hours a day yep. or nine, how is that going to play? I, I, I need, I think we need to step back and say, this isn't about this board. This Agreed. is about, all future boards, because that's what this needs to be made in. Now, I would go interject that I, I agree with Ron is we need to put a tight, I mean, especially in the middle of this when another library has lost $100,000 um, and we're not in a position to lose $100,000. So I think we have to be very careful, but um, I would say for my comfort zone and future, I think, it could, I, I would not be opposed to having two other people, but I would say in your notes, you leave one person and you give that to the board on your vacation, just like, you know, um, in my absence, this, I'll be gone January 1st to January 14th for, um, a great New Year's party, whatever you're doing. And during that two weeks, i.e. Casey or Beth or whoever in those management positions will be my financial, in a, in a sense, power of attorney or whatever. Um, for the, it wouldn't be a power of attorney. You're designate. 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 Yeah, as a designate. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever we decide on, I, I'm fine with it. But I want to point out one thing. The reason we have a credit card policy, credit cards to your manager, just to have it incidental. And then, and then the scenario with Director Fee passed out. I, I have yet to meet a vendor who does not accept a credit card to travel. And we do have managers who do have credit cards who can handle those incidental issues like that. Uh, it's, well, if and it's, I, if I, somebody I, we're dealing with who's not a professional person for the credit card, then it's a kind of shame on us. I mean, I respectfully disagree because as a someone who does performing in music i mean we you don't take credit cards i i do but i've never been asked i've never been offered a credit card it's always been in the form of a check have you ever do you take credit cards I, I i do but that's 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 unusual for musicians to be honest with you and not all performers and and I'm, i guess my point is I'm, I'm kind of with kendra in the sense that it's almost like it's almost like when you think about the 25th amendment or, or something where and, and can contemporarily designate somebody in in a, in a role until she returns and maybe it's informed to the board and writing and it could also be if we wanted to really satisfy it the stipulation could be that 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 person that designate um is you can is authorized only if board, the board members aren't available so we can make an effort to get board members authorized there so, and it's almost just an emergency kind of thing i don't know if we're over this. Minimize so what about uh one of the things I've seen done is where you set up an account, a petty cash account, throw 20,000 in it or whatever is appropriate, which is your max fear limit. And then you basically assign that out to and whoever you want to manage it and reconcile it at the end of every month. And the fear is someone's going to go bananas and whatever you, you set a limit on the amount of cash in that magical account. And it reconciles every month, and I think that's what the credit card does. Well, it's a separate account. Credit card have. check. I do, it doesn't really, you know, just basically run a account for With for incidentals. Card, it's limit you can't get to half a million dollars. Well, With the checking account authority. Well, with, with the checking account. Create a separate that. petty cash account. But now if we go back to our account. Says you want another separate account in that. Well, I, I mean, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm open. I just feel like if I don't have somebody that can back me up on these situations during like a short time, it could potentially put us put me in a bind. Does that make sense? And so, even if you guys would designate like one person, and I'm, I'm absolutely do not save checks or anything specifically when Anne's gone. I try to get all of that done before. There will be a situation, and it just happens that since we talked about this, it's happened twice. So, could you ask me to kind of keep track of that? So, okay, I'm gonna. Here's I'm just. A bigger question. That, that, okay. Uh, 
kind of out of the private sector, but treasures in the private sector are bonded. We don't do that here. Mm -mm. Is that not a thing that's common in, in, in state government? It's, it's not. Yeah. Uh, you will see on the larger governments, uh, for example, uh, Mr. LaFave, I believe that he does a. Who does? John LaFave, the county treasurer. Frank, does your treasurer have, are they bonded? Or the Windsor? I don't think they have enough. I would be surprised. I mean, I've never, I've been a fiduciary as an executor, a guardian, uh, nonprofit treasurer, and I would I have a bond, and it's it's a, just an insurance policy in case I take off with money. Former accountants and then our whole staff at this level, these people have to sign at this level, and and. Last thing we did that it was just a matter of risk. I mean, in other words, as I said, that we have 20,000 in the petty cash account. The greatest hit we could take would be low fees in that 20,000. I have no, I'm not averse to any approach that minimizes you know, our potential. Our That's what I'm after. The end. That's the end game. I remember all the rest of our accounts were locked down super hard, double signature, and so on and so forth. So, we just the rest of that money is really hard to touch to be sure that it is. But the day to day operations, if you try to just go out and help that, you can get it. But I mean, Ann Art is our director. She has total access without much oversight. And so our town manager wants to money as soon as we sign this. Okay, well, that's a, do that's, that's a system. Of dual signature. Yes. We don't have that here. Well, the cash management policy that you put forward says one signature required for check signing and related operational transaction responsibility. But the transactions that we talked about that we can preserve the value, we approve for the purchase required mm -hmm. for CBMA. So the, 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 the check signature is just right. the end of the approval process. Mm -hmm. of the we told her you can go to spend fifty thousand dollars in furniture. Right. So if she writes a check up for fifty thousand dollars, if she writes a check for fifty thousand dollars without mm -hmm. some purchasing authority based on our guidance, our approval, then she's in default and she goes to jail. For what happens? Well, yeah, but when you have when you have a million dollars that are missing, I, I, you know. <laughs> I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm trying to reach some kind of a well, resolution okay. that I mean, you wouldn't, you allows would, us to do what we need. Any big discrepancy would be would show up in the bank statements at the end of the month. So when Aaron would get the bank statements and would see that a million dollars was missing from an account, and she would Take have it. no record of that transaction, if she thought that that was me that took the million dollars, she would be calling you on the phone. Yeah, but to, to say like, there's a million dollars missing. There's a check missing, and and Anne's gone. And Anne's <laughs> gone. <laughs> <She's out. laughs> right, right. I mean, there's. Yeah, it's the not like I. Eric calls Anne and said, "You have your half of the evening. Are you on the phone?" <laughs> I mean, we have half, we have so, checks and balances. Need to have so yeah, I mean we have so, checks and balances. Go ahead, though. Why we go. went to the double signature approach was uh, this was a bit ago, years ago, but a individual convinced our bank to give them some money, faking a town, uh, oh, and okay. and the single signature basically caused the issue. And then you looked at the amount the money in the account, and you're going, holy crap, that they could have taken. Um, and therefore, we have now sheltered one pile of cash under lock and key because we were deadly afraid of, you know, you know, some, some clerk in the bank just handing out money um, and then having another pile that allows for daily operations because. Well, we have, we have to strike some kind of a balance. accord that allows us to be flexible in operations without straddling our employees and forcing them to do crazy things and also protect our position 
our financial position. So it, it's not one or the other. It's both. You've got to be able to work as a company. I'll use that word because I think that's what we're really talking about is process. Sometimes protecting the assets in the library because that's our big share as well. I mean, if we had a small account that for these rare instances that a employee It'd be a manager. Check. It would be a manager. I, mean, I don't have any concern about a board member who has to go in and sign something prepared by somebody else. My concern is I think our director should be bonded. Okay. Well, I'm going to, I will uh, have the bonding issue to attorney Garcia to look into. It's merely an insurance policy. Right, no, and I, I'm not disagreeing with that. And then I like the idea of, and I'm sorry, Erin, it's more work for you, but having a, a 20 or a $25,000 account or whatever is, a, whatever Director Kling would um, suggest. So, okay, I have a question for you on that. So like right now, like majority of our money sits in Colorado Trust. Mm -hmm. um, the operating account is Bank of Colorado. Mm -hmm. And usually we don't have a lot of money sitting in that account. Like we do a transfer just to cover payroll. So, I mean, you're talking like, like so, an average balance after payroll. Like we don't have. So if you're not doing money. payroll, you don't need 20,000 is what I'm hearing. If you're just going to do incidentals like the, oh, poop, we don't have money. Well, I'm kind of saying like the Bank of Colorado is kind of that She's for saying us. a lot of money in the check and operating account or didn't get applied. Right, but I'm so I'm just saying if we're going to have it's not huge with Bank of Colorado, yeah, it, it would be with it could be checks if we were doing Colorado. You close the month out at 130 grand in that account, so it's, it's, it's so it's I'm just saying maybe twenty thousand. Here's what I'm. I, let me let me just take back. I'm, okay, and I hear you, but what I want to say is, um, I don't think the guy that I've seen. A couple, I've seen the gentleman from Estes Park. My guess when he does his portrayals, he does not take a, a card. And I'm guessing that our historians who do this as a hobby do not take a card. Um, I have been to enough events to say, now musicians are probably a different breed. Um, More ways than one. Yeah, I'm, I'm not <laughs> arguing that, <laughs> but I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm, I think we do have some of our performers, some of the people we hire that are not going to take a card. I do think we probably need to have some sort of check and balance. I'm not disagreeing and coming in and um, writing a signing a check. I'm not disagreeing on that. Um, but I, I, I think we have to have something in place for um, the uh-oh moments. Right. And I would look for a recommendation from you and Anne on maybe how to set up a smaller account. And I understand it all comes from the transfer, but Anne would be the only one allowed to transfer. Right, I am currently the Correct. only one who transfers. I, I do believe it's, we'd have to think about this because it would be- That's very, what I'm saying. It would be very confusing to have two separate accounts at Bank of Colorado, you know, one that had some petty cash minor limit because not all those checks that I'm signing are for performers. I mean, I'm signing checks for Ratio Design and Wember and, you know, some of our bigger checks. Mm -hmm. And so, and, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I mean, it would, we'd have to like, what goes to what account? I mean, the, wouldn't the petty cash just be the rainy day fund? And that's really, it's a rainy day in the sense that the director's gone and can't sign a normal check. This is our break glass in case of emergency account. And it's reconciled. It's not something that's going to be used on okay. a regular basis. So this be, is this so is. I, I would I would be fine with that. Then I think it, we wouldn't even need ten thousand. I bet you like. You could uh, do I, yeah. Yeah. I, I took his like, number yeah. from the town. Like it, of for the instances where I'd have to do this, their checks are not very. Uh, I'm okay with any thing to protect our large cash position. That's what I'm protecting. That way, when the signature, if she just has a pile of cash, and but she had physical cash, like in her cash. But we don't have a safe. So that wouldn't be we good. Have, well, we have, yeah, we have. Well, I'm not yeah. Saying this. yeah. Okay. But I'm just saying, this is how we operate commercially, and she's not in the top. She can spend over. 
Uh, at the end of the day, she's got to write up her report to uh, the, the group team. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, if she gets you know, for 10000 or 10000 well, you know, there's her job. But I mean, yeah. she's been very trustworthy with being the group team's assistant. And, so I guess what I'm saying is, would you write up an idea and get it out to us sure. on some sort of petty cash? I, I have to agree, it is a scary time. And I, I certainly don't mean any disrespect to anyone who has been a signer. That's certainly not. Um, but you know, as soon as we started talking about it, next thing you know, a uh, local library is a hundred grand in the hole. Um, so of course that makes it relevant um, where maybe it wasn't as relevant. Um, and we are here, we applied to be here, and one of our big jobs as direct as a board is fiduciary. And so I'm I disrespecting anybody. I don't no, trust I'm anybody. not taking it that way at all. I'm not taking it that way at all. I trust anybody, my wife, my I have a lot of faith. I have a lot of faith in you and everybody else. But I I think I think I we've got a compromise lot. here because that <laughs> I think I think if we have a petty cash checking account, yeah. we have a compromise that takes care of and in the except in the instance when she has payroll, and then we would know of that and we'd know to come in and get those signed. Um, oh, okay, so that okay, so we just do it out of Bank of Colorado. That would. Yeah, I mean, I have my mom. I have my mom's account and my account, and I just have two different debit cards, and I. You know, well, now with me having a credit card too, though, if they do take credit cards, it won't be an issue. Right, no. So but if I, I'd say credit be... card is the first thing. If they don't have a credit card, say, okay, we'll get the petty, we'll write a petty cash check. Okay. Um, but so who would you have as signers on that petty cash account? Well, I think I, I would I would suggest that you can designate the signers for that. Okay. I mean, you got three managers, they could all sign the card. They're not, I mean, we only get to and, this that you're gone, you're gone, you're gone, and three others are gone. Well, that's yeah. The intention is that it's not to be used except one in case. Of, well, uh, or they come in and there's the aquariums here. Well, yeah, like and, like I said, you're in, a situ gone, you're in a situation. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, it's then the, you guys write the check. But it's the rainy day fund. Yeah, yeah, it's it's you know because it's you don't you know you could eat, go off as an email and say hey you know this check is due you forgot about it whatever life happens um, you know do you want me to take it or do you want to come in. Or whatever okay. we can come up with that that's that's okay. that's a one-on-one -on -one. that's not a big deal do the credit card first choice correct mm -hmm. and i think 99.9 percent .9 even journey fan we are so but i tell you that i mean you, credit card fees are not they add up after a while and if it's your yeah. if you're using it as your pay as just your payment no. i'm just i think by the people i've seen perform it. so we'll have to rewrite some of this Okay, so going on, I think. Did anyone else have any one anything on this? I think. Yeah, I want to add to there that our director is bonding. Okay. And we can check with the bonding company and see what the cost is. Okay, I think that was already on there. I think we made that clear, but I don't think it was. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not on here now, right. but you mentioned it. And we had mm -hmm. the right. attorney Garcia on it, so I think that was noted that that was to be on with it. That I think for sake of time, is this one wrote the other one. Uh, so what we what, yeah so what i did say is um i'm fine with having any of my reimbursement checks signed but i would ask once again you know as kendra said thinking for the future saying that like it would be the board president i think you need a second person there because the board president may not be available so treasure the the treasurer and the president one or the other can sign my reimbursement yes. checks yeah, um, and then we can bring those to the board meeting and you can sign them once a month. I'm fine yeah. with that. Yep. Um, but more than one person. Yeah, agreed. That's not that wasn't a big deal. Um, non budgeted expenditures over 30,000 must be approved by the library board. Brown had said before procuring the item. That's fine. That I'm I have no problem with that one. No argument there. Um, and then let's see. The only one was on bank statements. Yeah. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Which That's is already done. And approved by the right. Director. That was fine. Yep. That's already done. Yep. 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 Okay. No, I'm not the only one who read it. So, story. do you want us to bring this back as a revision at the next board meeting? Please. Okay. 
that you do can you approve the credit card policy? Yeah, we did. We did. We did. Yeah. I think you voted yes. You might have, voted, <laughs> you might have had a cake coma there. Right? Yeah. Sugar. All right. So that's why we got cake before we do this. <laughs> All right. Can you? Okay. I need someone to make a motion for the executive session. So moved. You have to read it. Uh, I move that we enter executive session pursuant to section 24-6-402 paren 4 paren f of the Colorado revised statutes uh, to discuss personnel matters uh, discussing the employment contract of Director Kling. Do I have a second? Second. All okay, we had a uh, trustee Basler made the Motion second um, by Trustee Dunworth. Um, all approve, all in, in favor say aye. 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 Anyone who wants to just sit here and debate the financial statement again? Okay, I'll, I'll pass. Unanimously, we're out. <laughs> okay, this is Clearview Library District, uh, regular meeting, returning from executive session, June 30, 2022, it is 8.35 p.m. Um, Ann Kling, would you please take attendance? Adams. I am here. Bessler. Here. Donworth. Here. Gerstner. Here. Balderrama. Here. Attorney Garcia is here. Office Manager Natalie Wagner is here. <laughs> Beth Gallinger, IT and Tech Services, and Director Ann Kling. All right. Um, we did talk about just a couple clauses in this uh, uh, contract, one of which was uh, number um, under number five. Um, we have instructed the attorney to cross out six days. Is that six time? Is that correct? For section four, oh, and four B. Four B. We've got some um, things you're going to uh, make remove from that. Would you go over that, please? Yes, under four B, we're going to remove from the debt house. Okay, thank you. And then under termination without cause for the district, we had a conversation about the director's insurance. Let it be known that the uh, directors and all full-time employees at Clearview Library District do receive a uh, personal policy of insurance as one of their business as one of their benefits. And with that in mind, um, we have had some discussion, which we can continue. Um, my personal opinion is I would be in favor of adding that to the compensation packet as actual cost. Um, and that would be part of the lump sum that we would pay out in the need of a termination without cause. Um, does anyone else want to comment on that? That's no. Nope, that's comment oh. session. Um, Discussion here. Um, Trustee Gershner, what was your feelings on that? I think you had some. I, I, I don't uh, agree to the word terminating somebody without cause. Uh, okay. Plus okay. Anyone else have a comment? Um, I, 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 although I understand his position, I feel that uh, that is part of our compensation and it should be fully cash amount in terms of terminating. Um, uh, just for the record, um, uh, Trustee Brodsky had to leave and we are extending the invitation to vote to Trustee Brasler. Do you have any comment? Um, I, I feel there's some subject. Is 
concerns for the sum of the package on clinical treatment. It ought to be clear, Bill, I think you stated this in writing, that a former employee can't be on employee insurance. Right, and that's why we said at cost, and that would be paid in one, one lump sum. Mm -hmm. um, how about Trustee Balderrama, what, what your thoughts? No, my, my thoughts are that the intention of, of compensating the director if we terminate uh, without cause, the intention is, is that we we're, we do for that 90 day period, we make them whole and that the health insurance uh, payments is, is a part of making them whole. Okay. Um, with this discussion, um, do we have any further comments? Director Kling, do you have a? Okay. Uh, section five. Uh, we have four C. That has been changed. That's been changed. That has been changed to uh, just say section four. I just want to oh, you're right. I forgot that. <laughs> Darn it. Okay. All right, De Director Kling, did you want to add to the conversation? Thank you. All right. All right. With that, I am looking for a motion. I move to accept uh, this this uh, contract with our revisions as stated. Okay, and that that revision being uh, the revisions to include the uh, the the clarification of removal from sick time from section four B, the uh, in section five B the uh, severance pay, severance including uh, health insurance payment at cost in one lump sum, and then also in section five to uh, change. Um, let me be specific here. Uh, in in section five a, uh, the reference to section four c be amended to just be section four. And on the, are you recommending insurance to be at cost or? I, I recommend insurance to be at, at cost. Is for that your motion? Lump sum payment. Yes, ma'am. Well, wait a minute. Lump sum. You don't pay insurance until you need it. I mean, for all I know, the next month she would be fully employed under somebody else's insurance. That's correct. That's possible. Or you could die. So you shouldn't pay something up some that hasn't been accrued yet. She should pay it as it comes due. Okay. Um, valid point. So could we amend that to say at cost paid directly mon monthly as needed up to the severance package? Up to the period. So let me just, we would amend that one part of the contract to say that her actual, that the director would pay paid monthly a check from the district for the actual cost of, of the health insurance direct as needed until other insurance is secured to the date, to the end of the severance package, which would be 90 days. Um, I would lean to, into our attorney at this um, to read what that motion would be if we chose to do so. Um, I think we're clear on the other minute ones that, uh, yeah, yeah, just the uh, insurance clause, please. You're going to reimburse her for actual insurance as accrued for up to three months, right? Monthly. Yeah. Up to three months uh, or until other insurance is secured, whichever comes first. Yes. Okay. No, because Colt mentioned other factors, which would be what if she passed prior to. Uh, other employment and or I don't want to say death. Um, well, there, there, there is a demise. <laughs> That's like my worst nightmare: passing away like the first day of retirement. Oh. I know. Yeah, it happens. I know it does. It happens a lot. I know. And I know, so I understand what is being said here, but it's not, it's not a fun conversation. 
I think we allow to uh, the wordsmith capability of our attorney to phrase that in such a way that it's professional and acceptable to the board. I think that's a good leeway. Something to the effect of uh, per month, up to three months, uh, until, or until other insurance is secured or unnecessary. Or other ne unnecessary. That's a good word. That's other good mitigating word. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so, so then, with that, I I so move that we adopt mm -hmm. uh, with the previous revisions I named with the with the exception of five B uh, being stated the way that uh, Director Garcia just stated. Okay. I'm sorry, that, I'm, that Attorney Garcia just stated. Yeah, we understood it, yep. but all right. Um, do I have a second on the motion, please? I second it. And so moved. Okay. All in favor of said motion, say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Okay. Motion passes. Four to one vote. Yes, sir. All right. And with before we get to the next motion, which would be adjournment, I would like to remind everyone that we have a pretty um, extraordinary opportunity the library is putting on, and that's the uh, Greeley Philharmonic performance that is going to be the 19th from 6 to 7, free to the public at Boardwalk Park. I think that's an extraordinary service that we're bringing to the community, um, if you're available. What is it? The Greeley Philharmonic. Oh, the Quintet, Brass Quintet. On July 19th, so um, I just wanted to make note of that. Now I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you didn't want the. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Wow, action packed. <laughs> I have one other announcement for the next meeting. Um, Sarah, who generally sets up these meetings and sends the invites and all that, is on kind of an indefinite leave. So going forward, um, I've been looking at creating a more generic Clearview Library District Zoom account. So it doesn't look like it's coming from Sarah. It doesn't look like it's coming from me. Um, it's not coming from anybody in particular. So I just don't want you to be alarmed when you don't get your monthly invite from Sarah Nesbitt okay. um, for the next meeting. All right, thank you. So that it'll, it'll come from a generic Zoom or worst case scenario, me. Okay, so. And perfect. Is there a time when um, we do salary adjustments uh, personnel issues with uh, policies, insurances. The one that comes up in my mind sometime before the end of the year, we have to do that that Colorado disability insurance. We either opt in or opt out. Before January 1st, we Well, I assume that's with Rochelle's committee, isn't it? The personnel. Okay. Uh, well, we would, we would have a team of people and we would bring it to the board. But we should uh, do a salary survey and see yeah. how it's going to be now. Right. Um, and I know I've been part of the district of all of their salary, their employees raised to 50%. Right. Uh, this is up to 50%. Could you add that to the agenda, please? Is typically these things go into effect in January. Okay. So that's a target. Something that we have a very limited time frame. There was a lot of confusion because 
But they clarified that. It doesn't go into effect for quite a long time. Yeah. Right. And well, we have to opt out. If you want to we're, opt we're out. in. Yes. That's right. Yeah, we're in once you opt out. And it then the collection of the taxes for it is like a year beyond that. So you have to build up the funds. Right. So start paying in 2023, but don't that. And we're already paying for that thing it's in another form. better than what we do in some respects. And here's um, some of the things I noticed. So right now, our disability only pays if you're sick. But if your husband is sick and you need to stay home and take care of him, your heart's still going to not cover that. The family will cover it. You need to get a regular or a spouse or even a parent or a relative and people that are care for their I think regardless, we want, we have to choose what yeah, we, we don't want to go blind yeah. and keep both. You do both, they have no, you know, there's no reason not to have both, but you don't have to pay. The because. So, mm -hmm. so, so the premium that I tell you about, we love money, and that's how they want to take both options. Yes or no? And that's what they call the premium model. Sure, I mean, they've got to develop funding in the head cap to Which determine the cost. They're coming in right now, I think they're supposed to come in the fall. Certain people are afraid that the numbers are much higher than expected because yeah. the benefits offered are so low. The second one of the monuments, yeah. actually, there was a CML in the book which can't technically be rolled out. Um, if the employee district opts out, the individual can opt in, but they have to pay for it out of their own check. Yeah. Not the, not the yeah, you won't be, you couldn't have like three options. Totally outside. You can opt, it won't help employees if they were without you. Or you can say they can do it on their own and they're not going to do it on their own. But once you sign up, you can do two things. So you're making three different things. Hmm, that's scary. So, uh, it doesn't pay higher than our current employees. Our current employee is 60% of employees is slightly higher than the So please so present consider. I'm preparing my own. And what the cost is of what we're paying now? It, yeah, of what are we paying now? So that says um, 0.45 percent of the employer pays 0.45 the employee pays, or the employer can be generous and say we'll pay the whole thing mm -hmm. for you. Um, it's that another part of the system. And, and this is brought to you by the same people who brought us para. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this has been a lot of fun. Can we have a motion to yeah, adjourn? I, I move that we adjourn the meeting. Do we have a second? I second it. Um, Balarama and um, Gershner was a second. I mean, I'm sorry, Dunworth was a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. We're, we're leaving. I said to Gershner. <laughs> All right.